In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace skies in Photoshop and how to match the color and the luminosity. We're gonna dive into more advanced selection techniques to remove complex skies. Hey guys and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This is Rabia from RetouchStudio.com and in this video I'm gonna show you three different techniques with three different image scenarios to select this guy and replace it. So we're gonna start with the first example here. We have a landscape image and let's say you are making a composite and you wanna replace this guy. So the easiest way to remove the background of this type of image is by using something like the quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna use it to make a selection around the mountain here and because we have a contrast between the mountains and the sky, it's gonna automatically detect the edges and finish the selection for us. Now you can hit the Q on your keyboard to enter the quick mask mode and that's gonna give you a better view of your selection. The red area is the area that is not selected and you can see here that some of the trees were missing by the selection and that's okay, we can fix that later. So I'm just gonna hit Q again to go back to the selection and I'm gonna hold Alt and click on the layer mask icon to create an inverted layer mask. You can see that I have my background that I'm gonna use underneath my image and right now the color and the luminosity are not matching. I'm gonna fix that in a little bit but first we need to refine the layer mask a little bit more. So I'm gonna create a solid color underneath the image so we can see the mask a little bit better and we're gonna need to remove the fringing on this area. So what we can do first is make sure the layer mask is selected and in the properties panel, click on the select and mask button. And from here, it's very simple. You're gonna take the refine edge tool and you wanna paint on the edges to restore some of the background and remove that fringe. We also need to clean this area on the left side and we're gonna do the same thing and this time with a smaller brush size. Alright, it looks like the layer mask is clean enough. Now you need to apply the changes. So I'm gonna make sure the output is set to layer mask and I'm gonna click OK. So now let's turn the background image back on again and we're gonna need to match them together. So because the mountains in the background are further away, they need to be much lighter. So let's fix the luminosity first by creating a levels adjustment layer on top of it and I'm just gonna make the darks less darker. Then brighten the midtones a little bit. So you need to pay attention to the edges of the mountains here. There's a little bit of fringing from the original image and we need to match that. So I'm gonna keep on increasing the lights until it matches. Alright, that looks good. Now we need to match the color and I'm gonna add a color balance adjustment layer this time. And basically I need to add more cyan and blue to match it. We need to do that also in the shadows and in the highlights. And in the highlights, I'm gonna keep it subtle. So because I was focusing too much on the mountains, now the sky is blown out. So I'm just gonna take the brush tool and with the white foreground selected, I'm gonna restore some of the details in the clouds. Alright, so this is before and this is after. Alright, so let's move on to the next example. And this time we have an image that is a little bit more complicated. So if I were to use the quick selection tool and try to make a selection of this guy. And then I'm gonna hit Q to see the selection in the quick mask mode. You will see that some parts of the buildings are not selected. 
and it's going to be hard to select those areas. So I will cancel that and deselect and I'm going to show you a better way to make an accurate selection and that's by using blend if. If you don't know what blend if is, you can access it by double clicking on the layer to bring the layer style dialog box and you'll see the blend if options at the bottom. And looking at our image, we can see that there's a lot of orange in the background and there's a good contrast between the buildings and the sky. And we can use that to make a selection. So in the blend if options, we're going to change it from gray to red. That's going to allow us to target the red colors. And now you're going to drag the right slider to the left side to hide that orange from the image. And by doing so, we are basically removing the background. You don't have to worry about this area here in the sea. We can always bring it back with a layer mask. We need to focus on the edges of the buildings and be careful not to destroy it. You can also hold Alt to split the slider and it will make a transition to make your selection smoother. You have your preview checkbox here to see the before and after. And I'm gonna try to remove as much as I could from the background without destroying the edges of the building. I think that looks good for now. I'm gonna click OK and right off the bat we pretty much replaced the sky. There are still some areas we need to restore like the orange area of the buildings and the sea. So we need to convert this into a selection in order to create a layer mask. And let me show you a cool trick to do that. First I'm gonna duplicate the foreground image and then I'm gonna right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. And by doing so, take a look at the thumbnail you will see that now it has transparency and that means we can load it as a selection and we can do that by holding control or command and clicking on the thumbnail and by doing that we no longer need this layer and I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna add the layer mask to the original layer and that's gonna apply the selection to the layer mask we can also alt click to see the layer mask and you can clearly see now that the layer that the mask is not perfect so we need to do a few things to refine the mask. I'm just going to double click on the layer to remove the blend if changes first because we have a layer mask now. I'll go back to the layer mask view and I'm going to take the brush tool and then change the blending mode to overlay. And now I'll start painting with black and a low flow. And as you can see, I'm removing the background and the tower is still intact. And that's because the overlay blending mode will not remove 100% white. So now we can use this technique to refine the layer mask and remove any unwanted areas. So I'm just gonna go really quick around these and remove the clouds from the sky. At this point, there's no need to keep painting with the brush tool and I'm just gonna take the lasso tool and make a selection around the rest of the sky and then I'm gonna fill the selection with black to hide it. Alright, we're gonna do the same thing for the buildings and I'm gonna take the brush tool and change the blending mode back to normal and then I'm gonna paint with white to restore the image. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this to keep this tutorial short, but you get the idea. Use the overlay brush technique to refine the mask and get a perfect selection. So that's basically it. We used Blend F to target the oranges in the sky and remove it, and then we refined the selection even further with a layer mask. Now, we had to use two different methods to remove the sky, and I did that on purpose to show you different possibilities. But sometimes it's gonna be a lot easier to remove the background with just blend if when you have a clear sky and a good contrast.
All right, so let's move on to the last example. And this time we have a much more complex sky and there's no way we can remove the sky with the quick selection tool or even blend it. So we're gonna use a different technique this time to approach this image. So make sure the layer is selected, then go to select color range. So first we need a better view of the selection and we can change that in the selection preview and I'm gonna choose grayscale. I'm gonna also uncheck localized color clusters and that's gonna make sure to limit the range of the colors we select. Now you can use the eyedropper to click on an area that you wanna select and also you can hold shift to add to that selection. But I want you to pay close attention to the bridge. If you increase the range too much, you're gonna destroy some details of the bridge. So I'm gonna try to select as much as I can from the sky and being careful not to destroy the bridge lines. You also have the fuzziness slider to control the details a little bit more. And again, if I go too far, I'm gonna destroy the details. So I'm gonna keep the fuzziness and the range low. We will still have some areas that are not completely white, but that's okay, we can still modify it later in the layer mask. So I'm gonna click OK, and that's gonna convert it into a selection. And now we can create a layer mask to apply that selection, and so far we have a pretty good selection already, but we can still make it better and also match the luminosity and the color. I'm gonna alt click on the layer mask and we're gonna need to enhance the contrast to hide the background completely and restore some details of the bridge. So what we can do here, instead of applying levels to the whole image, because that's not gonna work, we're gonna take the lasso tool and select only this area of the bridge and now I can click on Control L to bring levels and we can increase the contrast only in this area. I can make the whites whiter to enhance the bridge and the darks darker to hide the sky. So this is not gonna work much for the sky because we don't have much details and you are seeing this bending because the fuzziness was low. So we can also use the overlay brush technique and remove any unwanted areas. So I'm gonna quickly take my brush tool and go through the sky and remove it. Also, we don't have to stress too much about having a perfect layer mask as long as the two images are matching. Right now you can see there is a little bit of fringing at the edges and that means that the background is dark and we need to match the luminosity. So I'm gonna select the background layer and create a levels adjustment layer on top of it and we just need to lighten the midtones a little bit. And you can see by turning it on and off, that looks much better. I'm gonna take my brush tool again and remove this part of the sky also. Now this part of the bridge still needs a little bit more work. We need to enhance the contrast a little bit more. And if I'm gonna use the brush tool, it's not gonna work. And let me show you how it looks like when I turn the layer mask off. It's gonna destroy so much of the detail. So I'm gonna take my lasso tool again and select this part of the bridge. And I'm gonna use levels again to enhance the contrast. So that's the before and after.
I'm going to also select all this area here at the bottom and I'm going to fill it with white. And with my background color set to white, I'm going to click on Control Backspace to fill it. Okay, so that's all of the Skype was pretty much removed. I want to add one last adjustment layer to the image to match the color between the foreground and the background. So I'm going to add a color balance adjustment layer. And I'm just going to increase yellow and red. And you can see how these two adjustment layers help match the foreground with the background. Alright guys, those are the techniques I pretty much use for all my sky replacement and compositing projects. If you know of any other techniques, make sure to tell us about it in the comments section. Or if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. Also, if you want to master Photoshop compositing, consider visiting my website and check out my courses at RitaStudio.com where I go in-depth teaching you all my skills I have learned about compositing. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out the new tutorials. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.